You know, when it comes to saving money, we all love to do that. And with gardening, there are lots of opportunities. For example, we should always be looking for opportunities to protect our plants and our soil. And one of the best methods is with mulch. But we could go broke paying for it at the garden center, but we don't have to. In my book, some of the best options for that will cost you nothing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three of my favorites and how to get them for free. Now, buying in bulk will definitely save you money on your soil and mulch products, especially over bagged products, but how does free sound? Well, three of my favorite mulch sources are absolutely free. And the first one, Arborist Wood Chips. Now, I always have a working pile or two around my property, and I love these. Now, these are those chips that the tree services provide once they take a tree down, and I had a few trees removed on my property recently, and so whether you have trees taken down or you have a neighborhood service where somebody's getting some trees taken down, you can just go up to those guys and ask them if they will give you those chips. And usually they'll say yes because you're saving them the time and the effort of having to deal with them elsewhere. And if you have a safe place for them to dump their load, that's really all they care about. So that's a good way to do it. But even if you don't find that service in your neighborhood, there's a website called chipdrop.com that you can register your information and tree companies will actually go to that and look for people in the area of where they'll be working and if your name is on that list they're going to let you know and you may end up with a free pile of wood chips just like this. Okay my other favorite source of mulch leaves. Mother Nature's gift. I've already mentioned that before but really I just can't say enough great things about using shredded leaves and so I'm going around the neighborhoods collecting bags of leaves in the fall and I'm loading up my truck and I'm bringing them back here and I'm shredding them up with my mower and I'm dumping them into this pile right here. And over the winter time, they're breaking down even more. And then it's time for the harvest, which for me is early to mid spring when I'm getting ready to prep my summer garden and I'm putting my plants in those beds. And then I come with this amazing, what's called leaf mold or shredded leaf mulch. And the texture, the consistency, the way it is easy to spread and the way it breaks down in your soil and all the worms it attracts, I could go on and on. But the fact that this is absolutely free and you get a little exercise along the way and then it's one of the best mulches you can possibly use in your garden and it doesn't cost you a penny, well that's not a bad thing either. The easiest way to make leaf mulch is to run over your leaves in the fall with a mulching mower with a bagging attachment. You can also use a regular push mower and rake up the leaves afterward or even run them through a chipper shredder. Some leaf blowers also have a reverse function that sucks leaves into the machine, runs them through the impeller, and shoots the finely ground up debris into a bag. But the point is, you could even use them whole and let them break down over time. It will take longer. You probably won't get to them the next season where they're broken down like this. But if you have a little time on your hands, you don't have to do anything but put them in a corral like I do. And you can even put the bags in themselves that you use to store the leaves because they break down just as well. And that's a carbon source too. So there's no need to get rid of the bags either. So you have lots of options. But definitely try out the shredded leaf mulch because you will love it. Being smart about the yard work you're already doing can really pay off in the way of free gardening materials. And shredded leaf mulch in the fall isn't the only example. In fact, I end up creating a valuable garden commodity every time I mow my lawn with almost no extra effort. One type of mulch I'm fond of using periodically are grass clippings. Specifically, when I have just sown some seeds and I want to give them some protection, a mulch layer of protection, but protection that's nice and light. And so grass clippings work great for that. Now, usually I grass cycle when I mow my lawn, so the grass clippings are returning organic matter right back where I cut them, plus it adds a lot of nitrogen, so I'm not having to fertilize as much. But sometimes I collect those clippings and use them as a mulch. But here's the thing about that. When you collect them, a lot of times the grass is kind of wet or you get condensation inside the hopper, and that's the case right now. So I have a lot of clippings, but they're wet and they're a little clumpy to work with if you try to spread them out right now. So I prefer to wait until they get dried out, more straw-like to spread them out, and that's great. But that can take a little bit of time. So I've got a trick to speed up the process, and I want to show you how that works so you can go from maybe a couple days to a couple hours before you can spread the mulch. So the key to using the grass clippings quickly is to dry them out or smoke them, smoking grass, and it's okay in this case. And it's really just heating them up. So I pour them out on some clear plastic. I think this is four mil thick. I don't know if that really matters that much, but I just do an even distribution. 
One consistent thin layer is the goal, so the clippings cook evenly. Then you just wrap it all up in the plastic. And that heat is going to cause some of that moisture to evaporate. And then uh, it'll make it really dry and kind of straw-like. And that's what makes it nice and easy to spread. You can already see the condensation building up inside. And yes, that will trap a little bit of moisture, but it'll really draw a lot of that moisture out of the grass blades. And that's what I'm looking for. And maybe a good seal, pretty good seal right there. And then just let it cook in the sun for a few hours. No need to turn it or stir it or check on it. The heat does the work while you do other things. And once it's dried out and dull in color, it's much easier to scoop back up and spread in the garden wherever you need a very light top dress layer over the soil.